After 14 years investigating the Holy Shroud, we have reached a point where it's no longer a debate of science, but more a debate of reality. The Shroud of Turin has long stirred wonder, mystery, and controversy and devotion across both the religious and scientific worlds. Housed in the Cathedral of Turin in Italy, this ancient linen cloth bears the faint image of a crucified man, an image that millions believe to be the miraculous imprint of Jesus of Nazareth. For centuries, pilgrims have flocked to gaze upon it, moved by the haunting face that seems to stare back through time. But just as many skeptics have challenged its authenticity, demanding hard evidence over faith. Over the past hundred years, especially with the advent of modern technology, scientists have put the shroud through rigorous testing, from radiocarbon dating and forensic analysis to advanced imaging and DNA extraction. And the results have been surprising, sometimes baffling, and often contradictory. Specifically around 1354, when it appeared in Lyre, France. By 1389, Bishop Pierre d'Arcis of Troyes denounced it as a forgery, claiming a local artist had confessed to creating it. Despite this, the cloth gained popularity. Eight. Since then, it has remained a religious object of immense significance while also becoming the focus of intense scientific interest. The Catholic Church, notably, has never declared it to be authentic, but has also not dismissed it, leaving the question open for inquiry. Photographic analysis revolutionized public perception of the cloth. In 1898, Italian photographer Secundo Pia captured a negative image of the shroud. To the astonishment of viewers, the photographic negative revealed a more detailed three-dimensional looking face, seemingly more lifelike than the shroud itself. This led to a surge in interest, with many interpreting the image as a divine imprint. Later photographs and ultraviolet imaging further revealed hidden details, including blood-like markings and faint anatomical features, reinforcing the mystery. However, visual analysis alone wasn't enough to verify authenticity. Researchers began exploring the physical and chemical properties of the cloth. Tests indicated the image was a natural or supernatural process. Yet skepticism persisted. Microscopic studies, led by forensic expert Walter McCrone in the 70s, found red ochre and vermilion pigments, suggesting a painted image. McCrone argued the image was crafted using a gelatin-based medium common in medieval art. His findings were contested by other scientists, including members of the Shroud of Turin Research Project, who maintained the image could not be fully explained by pigments alone. The Carbon Dating Controversy Well, in 1988, a carbon dating was done that basically dated the Shroud um, to about 700 years ago, between 1250 to 1350 A.D., well, that would put it way out of the range of the first century. But they put these uh, three tests together and came up with an age of 90 AD, plus or minus 200 years, with a 95% confidence level. Perhaps the most headline-grabbing scientific examination came in 1988, when three prestigious laboratories at Oxford, Arizona, and the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology conducted radiocarbon dating on a sample cut from the shroud. All three labs produced results that placed the f to many the radiocarbon dating seemed to settle the debate. News outlets declared the shroud a hoax, and interest among scientists began to wane. But not everyone was convinced. Critics of the test pointed out that the sampled area may not have been original cloth. Some argued it came from a repaired section added during restoration efforts, specifically after the 1532 fire. This so-called medieval repair theory posited that the radiocarbon date reflected only the newer threads, not the original fabric. Additional theories questioned whether the shroud might have been contaminated over the centuries by bacteria, smoke, handling, and other biological matter that could have skewed the results. Others suggested that environmental factors, such as the presence of carbon monoxide or elevated radiation, might have artificially aged the fabric in the eyes of the testing equipment. Mainstream scientists, however, remained largely unconvinced by these counter-arguments. The labs that performed the test maintained confidence in their procedures, and several subsequent analyses concluded that the claims of repair or contamination did not hold up under scrutiny. One 2020 review examining the statistical consistency of the carbon dating data acknowledged some irregularities, but concluded that only minor adjustments would be needed for the samples to align, hardly enough to suggest a radically older date. Still, the damage had been done. To believers, the radiocarbon testing had been flawed from the start. To skeptics, it still remained the strongest argument that the shroud could not possibly date back to the time of Christ. 
biological evidence and DNA mystery. The cross that he carried that smudges those wounds across the shoulders. There's the dislocated right shoulder from falling. There's bruised knees. There's a bruise to the tip of the nose and a deviated septum of the nose. Um, and then there's the awful indignity of being crucified naked um, with nails through his, his wrists, the lower part of his hands, through his feet. This discovery of the shrunken blood cells gives us an indication of not only the extent of the suffering that Jesus suffered, but it also fits in with the known tortures that we can see Jesus must have endured on that day. Another avenue of inquiry emerged through biological and forensic testing. Blood stains in particular drew a great deal of interest. Were they actual blood? Could they be linked to a specific individual? Walter McCrone maintained the stains were pigments, not hemoglobin. Yet others, like John Heller and Alan Adler, found evidence of human blood components, such as heme and bilirubin, suggesting the stains were indeed consistent with actual bleeding wounds. In 2015, scientists vacuumed dust and pollen from the shroud and analyzed trace DNA. Their findings were startling. The cloth contained mitochondrial DNA from a wide range of ethnic groups and geographic regions, including areas in Europe, the Middle East, India, and even Asia. Some DNA sequences also suggested contact with people from North Africa and the Americas. These findings painted a picture of a relic that had passed through many hands and across many continents. Researchers identified 19 different plant taxa embedded in the fabric, some of which were native to Jerusalem and surrounding regions. Others originated in regions like China, suggesting contact far beyond what might be expected for a European artifact of the Middle Ages. While some argued this diversity supported the idea of a cloth with ancient Middle Eastern origins, others noted that relics often traveled widely, especially those tied to Christian devotion. Analyzing the image and its formation. They also don't understand how it was made, which to me is very fascinating because it's not paint. It's not, they don't know what caused the image itself and how that technology would have even been available. It wasn't. No. A couple thousand years ago. An intense light, I mean, atomic, to leave almost like a photographic imprint on a piece of cloth. Yeah. It took 34,000 trillion watts of energy, but Whoa. it wasn't just the amount of energy, it was the speed. Think about when the Bible says we'll see Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. The Aenea Laboratory said this 34,000 trillion watts of energy traveled in one fortieth of a billionth of a second oh to leave the image on the shroud. Otherwise, yeah. it would have scorched the image and destroyed it. And the yeah. image is just two or three microns thin. Beyond dating and biology, much effort has been devoted to understanding how the image on the shroud was formed. Unlike traditional artwork, the image isn't painted in strokes. Instead, it's a very shallow discoloration, limited to the outer layers of individual linen fibers. There's no evidence of brush bristles, dyes soaking through, or any visible medium that would account for such detail. The Shroud of Turin Research Project concluded in 1978 that the image could not have been produced by any known artistic method. It suggested the image behaved like a photographic negative, leading some to theorize the image might have been formed through a burst of light or energy. This gave rise to the so-called radiation hypothesis, which posits that a flash of light or other form of energy might have scorched the image onto the fabric during some unknown process, possibly tied to a miraculous event. Physicists and chemists have proposed alternatives, including the Maillard reaction, a process where amino acids and sugars produce a browning effect similar to what happens when food is grilled. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think the Shroud of Turin is a medieval forgery, or could it be the burial cloth of Jesus? Let us know in the comments section below.